everyone. Appreciate you tuning into this episode of The Wolves Den. Today, I wanted to go over technology in landscaping, technology in hardscaping, that type of stuff. I know that this could be a very opening a can of worms entirely with how much there could be to talk about this, but <clears throat> I'll sort of talk about this on a 50,000 uh, foot view, overview of everything, a bird's eye view, just so um, you guys get an understanding of where I'm coming from Coming from for this. So at first, uh, be, a lot of companies that have been around 40, 50 years, 30 years, um, not saying all of them, but some of them, they definitely could be a little bit behind the eight ball when it does come to where we currently are as a, a nation, as a country with an, an overall where we are to, as a technology. So uh, coming in as a newer business in the past couple of years, being the younger generation, uh, we sort of grew up with technology and being able to actually implement that into the business has been a huge benefiting factor for us. Uh, whether it be with iPads, softwares, uh, automations, you name it. So uh, I, I really think that the biggest piece of technology that we have used um, so far has been a, a CRM that we use is Jobber. Um, we are sort of gr outgrowing it at this point for where we currently are, but still for what it does, it does uh, allow us to operate more efficiently than if we were to just use everything on Microsoft Office or Word. And it's a much more professional type of software. Um, I know that there's many different softwares out there, such as LMN, Service Autopilot, Service Titan. Um, I mean, the list could go on and on, but this is just something that I found that works for us, uh, being able to store our client information, being able to keep records and logs of quotes and requests and invoices and um, payments. <clears throat> so definitely having something to help us take credit cards has been something that has helped us Im immensely uh, through Jobber. They could process it electronically or that they can also uh, we, we do have card readers that we do bring on site. We use them infrequently, but it, it's just another tool that we do have to make it more efficient and easier to keep up with technology since everyone is very card focused with trying to get points. And um, instead of paying it today, you pay it 30 days from now. So it's just being up with the current times that we currently are in as a uh, society. So definitely a good CRM um, with automations. I mean, this is something that Jobber does have with um, the automations, there are several automations integrated in there. So uh, we have something that follows up with clients after uh, a quote has been sent out. Once they submit a request, an automation goes out, uh, invoicing, uh, sending them receipts. Just being able to have automations, I mean, you don't want to over-automate things because that will never solve a problem. Obviously, you need to have a good workflow and have a good a, a good system before you start automating it because uh, a, a good software, my business coach, Brad, he, he actually shared this to me. I, I may not be saying it right, but it, it's the principle that any type of software, any type of automation will not solve your problem. It would just help ease uh, you into another aspect of efficiency, but it will never 100% cure a problem that you currently are experiencing. It could help, but it's not going to 100% cure. If it's already broken, it's not going to fix it. So being able to have a good working process and uh, certain steps and then having an automation be make it more efficient, that's really what it comes down to. Um, I mean, we do have automations for reviews. We use Nice Job. We are in the 21st century, so in order to uh, sort of make a name for yourself online, being able to have real reviews by real customer customers that have experienced your uh, services, that really has propelled us and pushed us to the next level in the past couple of years. I mean, just compared to other um, landscape, hardscape companies in the area, being able to stand out and shine out, it just shows, uh, it's a trust builder with uh, with potential clients that are coming in. I know that pretty much eight out of 10 of clients that we get a new request for say, 
oh, you have great reviews. And how do we get more reviews? How do we be able to stay on top of that is by having automations to follow up with them in a professional manner. There's obviously annoying ways to do it and there's professional ways to do it. So that's another thing, automations for reviews. Um, there's also automations for uh, referrals. So through a uh, nice job, they just came out with another thing that instead of following up asking for a review, they follow up asking for a referral saying, hey, do you know any friends, family, neighbors, just anyone in the area that uh, could use our services and being able to reward your current clients for referring you. That's another huge thing as well, since they're uh, they're sort of taking out the, the marketing aspect. I mean, it is another form of marketing, but um, they're doing you a favor. So being able to reward them for that would, would really help out and word of mouth uh, marketing, word of, word of mouth referrals is the best type of um, marketing, really, because it's coming right from the horse's mouth at the end of the day. So definitely automation is a very important. We recently started to do uh, with Spencer, our IT slash marketing guy. Um, more to come on Spencer. He's a very smart individual and he's helped us out tremendously but Spencer has taken a lot of time to help us out with efficiencies being able to um, create a QR code reader on all of our tools and all of our equipment so that our mechanic could keep a running log of what needs to be serviced what has been serviced how it was serviced why it's broken and just being able to keep a running log so instead of him getting calls and texts throughout the day saying, hey, this broke, hey, that broke, yada, yada, yada. Um, now he gets an email right to a link that the crew member uploads after scanning the QR code of the issue of the machine, and then he'd be able to take care of it from there. So it's creating a, a work order more or less, but using technology through the QR codes um, and being able to track it on... Uh, document-based software to help everyone out because a lot of this type of stuff could just get lost in the weeds, especially as you do grow. Um, being able to have workflows and uh, a process for how to handle m machines breaking down or tools breaking down or, or whatnot or things that need to be maintenance. So that's definitely something that uh, we recently started to do. I actually got that from my business coach, Brad, over at uh, Newcastle. He shared that to me. They use Surface Autopilot, and it their QR codes integrate with Surface Autopilot. Ours doesn't because Jobber is limited in that aspect. That's what I was sort of going back to. We're sort of hitting a ceiling with Jobber, but still good for now. Um, also, QR codes just being put on any type of uh, marketing material that you were to be handing out to clients. So whether it be a business card, whether it be flyers, um, anything really, being able to have that QR code and being able to scan it and have that go to your link tree, whether it be a career page, whether it be a review page, whether it be you're filling out a request form. Um, it's just, every, in the past several years, a lot of people have came became familiar with what they are and how to use it. And just being able to use that tool would help direct people in the appropriate manner using technology. Again, just what, what's recently come out in the past couple of years. Uh, GPS tracking is something that has become very, uh, important to us. I mean, it, it is a sore subject for us because a couple of months ago during the winter, we actually did get a truck of ours stolen uh, with a brand new VBX 8000 Salter on it. And that was, um, that's a whole nother story in itself. But still, we did have a GPS tracking software attached to the truck and it was taken out uh, when it was stolen. So uh, we sort of upgraded our system and being able to know where your equipment is, that's another huge thing. Um, and not obviously not having to get to the point of getting something stolen before you start implementing that. It, it just keeps everything a little bit safer. And it, it's tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, pieces of equipment out there. And being able to track it efficiently and where it is. Uh, and being able to look at it right from your phone. It's definitely something that uh, I would highly recommend. Obviously, it doesn't have to be every piece of equipment, but the pieces of equipment that uh, you feel best fit. So that's definitely something as well. Um, 
I know this is a little generic, but we do use a lot of Excel documents, Excel sheets for running KPIs, key performance indicators, uh, with job costing, being able to, after a job, being able to run through uh, our numbers, what was quoted versus what was paid out, and being able to efficiently uh, track those numbers and use certain calculators being able to use the, t the software of uh, Excel or Google uh, Sheets in order to track efficiency and use technology to your advantage so you're not plugging in a calculator all day. That's definitely helped out for sure. Um, besides the job costing, we use that for um, fund allocation into our bank accounts. So right when a check comes in or a credit card payment comes in, we allocate. We use a, a Excel document that we've created and allocate certain funds into certain accounts. So we are uh, budgeting accordingly, planning accordingly for taxes for the winter, for investments, for payroll, for operations. So that's definitely another thing. And I know I'm just sort of going through things. So if you were to have questions on this, feel free to reach out or ask, um, email, DM, text, call, whatever. So I, I know I'm just sort of running through some things. Like I was saying, I'm just sort of looking at it as a bird's eye view, what we, we, we do for technology in, in landscaping and hardscaping. Um, and also uh, out in the field being, I mean, we just got, I mean, it's, it's technology, but it's also a tool. I mean, however you want to look at it. Um, zip levels, those are fantastic out there, being able to have the crews um, and the estimators such as myself, <laughs> right now I'm doing all the estimating, but as we do grow, we do plan on getting more people. But the zip levels are a great tool. The The ease of it, the efficiency of it has been something that um, it's much better in certain aspects of using a laser level. And also using laser levels has been uh, fantastic to get accurate grade points. Um IQ table saw, that's definitely something that has been newer in the industry with the dustless technology that has recently come out. Um, one, keeps your crew safe out there. Two, uh, it keeps a, the job site cleaner. And so you don't have smoke and dust and everything just flying everywhere. So being able to use that, the newer technology that has come out in especially safety protocol with uh, silica remittance of that when you are cutting pavers and, and block and whatnot, that's been great. Um, and also, we don't do it now, but we want to transition into it um, using iPads in all the vehicles that are hooked up to cellular so that right now we are using job folders on like actual manila folders with papers, documents in there. Um, that's definitely... It's worked for us. It is working for us, but obviously having it in both areas, cloud-based software that Jobber does have. So you can attach certain documents, certain designs, certain um, timesheets onto the job, but also having it in paper is, is great as well. So we, like, we would want to transition into having two areas um, of document um, just tracking documents and putting documents on certain jobs. That's definitely great one for keeping a, a log on a software such as Jobber and also using technology so that, God forbid, you lose a piece of paper or it gets wet in the rain or you, you rip it or who knows what, you at least have it on that iPad. And so that the, the crews out there don't have to be using all their cellular network because they probably, they, depending on what plan they have, you don't want to have them just be using it for GPS and for looking at jobs. You want to be able to give them the tools that they need and use iPads technology to be, to be able to make it the most uh, efficient form of uh, executing jobs, really, and tracking jobs. Uh, I know I just sort of hit on this, cloud-based software. So being able to have a software, whether it be uh, Google Teams, not Google Teams, excuse me, Microsoft Teams or Google Docs or uh, Jobber or another one of those CRMs where your entire team can view things. That's definitely been something that has helped us out. Um, and also you could sort of work from anywhere, not literally anywhere. It depends on what type of job that you are doing, which role you have in the company. Um, obviously, if you're a, a foreman, you can't work from anywhere. But 
uh, you could like myself having email and uh, Microsoft Teams hooked up and our jobber, I could, I could besides the sales and the estimating aspect of it, a portion of the sales I can do from anywhere, but actually going out on site, that's really the only thing that I would really have to go out for. Everything else could be, I don't have to be in my office. I can go sort of, I could be at home. I could be on vacation. I could be down the street. Who, who knows what, which is definitely great. Um, so that gives you the flexibility and being able to uh, move a little bit easier than have all the, the information in one place, which is fantastic. Um, I mean, we're just sort of hitting the, the tip of the iceberg with this. Uh, it's definitely having technology, being able to come out with or being able to follow the new trends of the industry as well as just where we are as a society, really trying to um, make it more efficient, more or easier for client interactions, um, as well as for being able to have employees actually use certain um, tools out there, certain technologies out there to make their job easier. So, I mean, this is just really what we use right now. It's, I mean, I know that there's endless amounts of technology out there that could really help. Um, oh, another thing, two other things really that just came to mind. Uh, photography, drone shots. Uh, we just recently got one this year trying to use the, the drone and photography. I mean, our drone was $800. Yes, it is an investment for sure. But the, the quality um, that of photos, videos, and content that you get is, it surpasses anything. Um, so using that, it, it could also help in the estimating aspect of things. So if you are looking to get a uh, bird's eye view of a shot, that's fantastic. And then you could also draw in there um, after taking a picture. So that's definitely something I, I haven't done that yet, but I've thought about doing it. Um, as well as photography, the, the technology now in the photography. I know a lot of people have iPhones, Androids, um, still even with those cameras out there. They are great, but the new, new technology, being able to showcase your work has really been something special. Um, we have time-lapse camera as well, so using that to showcase work, it's definitely something that a lot of people that are trying to stick up with the trends and to stand out and show their work and show their content and show clients with, with the marketing aspect have started to, to transition into that stuff. Um, and then the last thing that I can really think of is design software that's definitely something um, we, we currently outsource our designs at the time uh, we don't have anyone in-house for our size at the time but uh, the software i'm pretty sure it's vistera uh, i'm pretty sure um, i could be wrong but anyway that software or any other software out there uh, or enscape excuse me it's enscape that we use um, I just know Vistera is another one, but Enscape is something that we use uh, with our outsourced, or who we do outsource with. Um, her name is Kim, and being able to use that technology has really helped the clients get a better understanding of what the space is, being able to um, know what they are buying at the end of the day and to get a visual for everything. That's definitely been something, it's a huge selling point, um, as well it's been able to help the crews out a lot, being able to know what the job is, what the final goal is, what the expectations are of what was sold versus what is actually going to be implemented. So that design software, uh, it's a great selling point. It, uh, it It's something that allows us to be a step above our, our, the other, our other companies in the area that may not be using it compared to just putting a hand sketch on it it's much more professional and the clients absolutely love it it's once you do pull that that screen and show them it's a, in most scenarios it's breathtaking and they it's always better than they expected and that's what we're selling at the end of the day we're selling and providing a, a service we're providing ex, an experience and being able to uh, show that experience even before they were to sign the dotted line, say, or put a shovel in the dirt, uh, it is something that has really helped us with the new technology that's been out. Uh, whether it be a 2D CAD, even though it's a little bit more simple, but especially the 3D renderings. Um, 
So, so I mean, technology is definitely something that we we're trying to implement more and more. This is just some of the stuff that we use right now. Um, I know there's companies that do more than us. There's companies that do less than us, but we're, we're really just trying to stick up with the current trends and really be able to, uh, just grow as society grows and go with, with technology really. So, um, let me know your thoughts on this. I mean, I'm curious what other people use, what other people like, what other people don't like with whether they use it or not and, and why so. So, and just being able to learn from one another, that's really what it comes down to, what other companies have done to get them to the point where they are and what, and learn from good and bad instances as well. Um, I mean, I really have learned a lot from my business coach, Brad, over at Newcastle with some of these things, such as the QR codes, the automations, um, the CRMs, all that type of stuff. But that's really just the tip of the iceberg. And so being able to learn from people that have been in the industry and being able to learn from people that have implemented these types of um, forms of technology and software, that's really how you grow as a company. And being able to have a vision for that, it's really something special just by reaching out, just by asking questions, by um, taking a risk. That's really how it's done. So I uh, appreciate your time listening to this. Uh, let me know your thoughts on it. But again, technology is crazy. Technology is scary. Technology is wonderful. But um, that's just where we are as a society. So bringing it back into the trades is definitely something uh, that I personally like and want to do more of. So thank you for watching this or not watching this, excuse me, listening to this. So uh, let me know your feedback. Thank you. Take care.